Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today I want to talk about the October 2024 JW broadcast episode. Now this broadcast episode has similar themes to the August broadcast episode. So a lot of my talking points from that video will be the same in this one. And that is they are directing a lot of this episode to witnesses who are just tired, who are growing impatient, who are wondering where is this Armageddon that you have been saying around the corner for decades now. They're talking to them because I think that a lot of witnesses are starting to experience burnout and I'll touch on why a little bit later in this video. But before I start yapping, let's start the first part of this video. When I first began serving at Bethel, I'd call home to speak with my family and my mother would always ask, have they told you when the date of Armageddon is? Though she was being humorous and didn't expect an answer, her question reveals what we all long for, Jehovah's promised new world. Maybe you have, in a sense, asked Jehovah that question, how much longer, Jehovah? Or said to Jehovah, I'm exhausted. I don't know how much longer I can keep going. Please, Jehovah, when will your promises for a world of lasting peace refreshment, and relief from the pressures of this world come true. We all likely feel this way from time to time. What can help us not give up, not give out in our spiritual battle? You want to know what's so interesting to me? It is that on one hand, Jehovah's Witnesses will claim to be the happiest people on the planet. They will say that they are the only group that has experienced true happiness. Um, they've coined the term hashtag best life ever. But then you have moments like this where they're acknowledging, hey, we know you're exhausted. We know a lot of you are at your wits end waiting for Armageddon. You know, we've all felt like that from time to time. Well, you really can't have it two ways. Either you're fighting for your life exhausted and burned out or you're living your best life. <laughs> like, which one is it? I think the average witness has deluded themselves into thinking that they're happy. But it's videos like this that really reveal how the average witness actually feels. And again, that's exhausted and wondering where is the end. Note the words of Jesus at Mark 13, verse 29. Notice what he says. Likewise, also you, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the doors. What things would we see happening? Prophecy being fulfilled. When we recognize Bible prophecies being fulfilled before our eyes, our faith is fortified. We see the end is imminent. We recognize that we're almost done. That helps us not give out. What are some of these prophecies? You're familiar with the prophecies of earthquakes, wars and reports of wars, food shortages and disease all happening at once. You see these things happening. We see the diminished love of God and the deteriorating attitude of people in general. As foretold in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy 3.13 says, Wicked men and imposters will advance from bad to worse. You see these things happening. So step one to fixing the attitude of a Jehovah's Witness who has grown impatient and exhausted is to try to reignite that sense of urgency. So they're like, oh, look at the wars, look at look at the natural disasters, look at the diseases that shows that's proof that we have to be so close to the end. And you know what? This is why education is so important. And it doesn't have to be formal education. I mean, even just reading and just knowing about your history, because the more you learn about world history, the more you will realize there was never a time in recorded human history where those things were not happening. And a lot of these things have actually gotten better and not worse, which is why when they make those type of statements, they don't really bring any statistics. They don't bring any facts. So this is just classic fear mongering, no stats, just emotions. And whenever you hear a tragedy, they want you to associate with that being close to the end so that you can stay on guard, you can stay fearful, and most importantly, you can stay within the organization. Have you ever watched the news and thought, is this it? Is this the beginning of the Great Tribulation? In a previous episode of Apply Bible Principles, James and Linda learned to change their focus and maintain joy. Now they'll help a young brother do the same. 
I've known James and Linda well forever. So now we get a segment that is more or less a sequel to a previous segment that was presented in the August 2024 broadcast. So we are reintroduced to James and Linda. And in the previous video, James and Linda were much younger. And Linda at the time was expressing that she just really didn't expect that this system would still be going on this long. We've always been happy to do what Jehovah's asked. But I never thought this system would drag on for so long. Now, James and Linda are a little bit older now, and surprise, surprise, Armageddon has still not come. There was a child in the previous video who is now a young adult, and the rest of his family has left the organization, good for them, and now James and Linda have taken him under their wing. I knew it was the truth. I just wanted more. But when the pandemic hit, I knew the end was close. I started studying again. And got baptized. Just in time. So this is the reason why I think a lot of witnesses are experiencing burnout right now is because they thought that the end was coming when the pandemic hit. I actually received a very urgent text from my grandma in March of 2020 where she was saying, listen, they have shut down field service. They've shut down assemblies. You know, they're not allowing visits at Bethel anymore. It's getting serious. You need to get yourself together. Come back to Jehovah now. It was very clear by the tone of the message that my grandmother genuinely thought that Armageddon was around the corner and that I needed to get back immediately. And we know witnesses hang on to every major current event that's going on as a sign that the end is here. But I think because COVID was a global event that they really thought like this has to be the beginning of the end. And then, you know, we started to, as a society, find our new normal and then business started to resume as usual. And I think a lot of witnesses we're disappointed that like that wasn't the big catalyst for Armageddon. He keeps passing this blog information and asking for everyone's opinion. I saw it. It's the third one this week. I'll talk to him. He just needs to verify his sources. Did you get a chance to read the links I sent you? Of course I read it. And? It's exciting to think we could be so close. And when you watch the news, you realize it could be any day now. What's all the excitement? The cry of peace and security. Thanks again for sharing. See you. Tulani, remember Jesus said, no one knows the day or hour. But he said we should keep on the watch. I think it's great you keeping the end close in mind. Because of you and Linda. Both of you have shown me how close we really are. Ah, uh, I have to take this quickly, but I'll see you on Friday. So this is the part of the broadcast where I start to get whiplash because the speaker from the opening talk just said he he just said to look at the state of the world. And that is proof that we are close to the end. You know, look at the current events that are going on. You know, they want you on edge. They want you to look at any current event as a sign of the end times. But then when you start to look too closely and get too amped up, then they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Then they have to reel you back in a little bit and pull you back. And I just feel like this is the type of thing that destroys a person's mental health. Like, am I alone in, in looking at this and, and feeling like it's absolutely insane how, how quickly they can toggle back and forth? If you tell people to look at current events as a sign of the end times, well, then 
you can't really get mad when they hang on to every single news article and every single breaking event. You can't get mad at them when they get excited about those things because you just told them that these are the things that they should be looking at as evidence that Armageddon is right around the corner. They want you to be in this organization for the long haul because they know they cannot deliver on this promise of Armageddon and paradise. So they want you thinking long term, but they still want you to have this urgency, but just carry the urgency long term because they ain't really coming anytime soon. They're really trying to get you in the mindset of being a lifelong member. All together. We just want to be sure you are focused on the right things. We can all start thinking too much about when the end will come. But I'm just being alert. Isn't that what you taught me to do? Alert is good. And if the end is really so far off, why did I need to change my life now? And again, Tulani is now painted as the one whose attitude needs adjusting, but Tulani actually has the right attitude and he's asking the correct questions because words mean things. And while I understand that the organization is not above completely changing the meaning of words, but when you keep telling someone soon, soon, very soon, you start to look back and wonder, well, wait, why did I give up all of those things in the past? Why did I do all that sacrificing? I did those sacrifices under the impression that the end was coming soon. And now we have passed the timeline for soon. So what was this all for? There was a moment in our lives when we focused too much on the when rather than the why we were serving Jehovah. It affected our zeal, our happiness, our perspective and we'd never want that for you this is the answer since all these things are to be dissolved in this way consider what sort of people you ought to be in holy acts of conduct and deeds of godly devotion we don't know when the end will come. Could be tomorrow. Could take a little longer. But what matters is the kind of person we are when it comes. So focus on your love for Jehovah His organization, His work. Take the excitement you have and direct it the right way. You know, that final scene really encapsulates what the governing body wants witnesses to do. Stop worrying about when the end is coming. Continue brainwashing yourself to believe that we are directed by God and this is the one true religion. Continue recruiting other members because this organization ain't going to grow itself. And continue donating your free labor via construction projects because, you know, these kingdom halls ain't going to build themselves. And, you know, we would like to have more property that we can eventually sell and not give no money to the people who help build it. So, yeah, bring that free labor. Bring those recruiting efforts and stop worrying about what the end is coming. That's exactly what they're saying to the members. And I found it funny when Linda mentions that they needed to change their attitude and focus on why they were serving Jehovah and not the when. But quiet as it's kept, the average witness is serving Jehovah because they have been told that an immediate reward, i.e. paradise, is right on the horizon. So yes, people are getting a little antsy because... They're ready for their reward. That's why people are in this thing. And the governing body gets an additional benefit when you just continue, you know, recruiting and studying and going to the meetings and doing different building projects. Because when you're doing those things, not only are you furthering the interests of the Watchtower Corporation, but you're staying so busy that you don't even have time to question your doubts. You're staying so busy that sometimes you don't even realize how much time has passed. You know, when you get caught up in that last day's talk and you're only talking to other witnesses, 
sometimes you don't even realize I've been saying this for 15 years, for 20 years. That's what they want. They want you so busy doing their cultivities that you don't even think about it. You stop asking. You just become a robot for the organization. And eventually, once so much time has passed, your brain will refuse to accept that you've been deluded because then you would have to accept all that wasted time. So the longer someone believes something, the less likely it is that they will ever change that belief. And when you look at this example with James and Linda, you know, what they should have done in the previous video is cut their losses and leave. Once they realize, hey, this Armageddon thing hasn't come within the timeline that they said it was coming. Let's just go live our lives, you know, but they've stayed. And now that even more time has passed and now they're getting up in age. Now, of course, they have to continue believing that this was all for something. So not only do they continue to believe the lie, but now they help to brainwash someone else and condition them into continuing to believe the lie. And, you know, this is just how this this sad pattern and this cycle continues. But that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. So thank you so much for listening. Please like and comment and I will see you all in the next video.